Hey guys, and welcome to the first episode of Reading. I'm going to be reading a book off of the Nook. Reminds <laughs> off of um, the Nook. Reader. And in this first book, I'm going to call these parts, but the first book is Alex Ryder, the first one in the Alex Ryder series, Stormbreaker. I'm going to be reading a chapter each part. So, let me just drink a bit of Coke. Start. Chapter 1. Funeral Voices. When the doorbell rings at 3 in the morning, it's never good news. Alex Ryder was woken by the first chime. His eyes flickered open, but for a moment he stayed completely still in his bed, lying on his back with his head resting on the pillow. He heard a bedroom door open and a creak of wood as somebody went downstairs. The bell rang a second time and he looked <coughs> at the alarm clock glowing beside him. There was a rattle as someone slid the security train off the front door. He rolled out of bed and walked over to the open window, his bare feet pressing against down on the carpet pile. The moonlight... The moonlight... Sp sp Sorry, guys. I really can't read. I'm going to need to get my glasses. Bear with me. Don't have a couple of glasses. It's because it's really small writing. I can zoom in, I think. Oh, there you go. I look probably good now. Oh, let's see if I can enlarge the text. I'm sorry I have to do this one. Text. Size. There you go, that's fair. It means more pages, but. The moonlight spilled onto his chest and shoulders. Alex was 14, already well built with the body of an athlete. His hair, cut short apart from two thick strands hanging over his forehead, was fair. His eyes were brown and serious. For a moment he stood silently, half hidden in the shadow, looking out. There was a police car parked outside. From his second floor win from the second and I'm looking view. From his second floor window. Alex could see the black ID number on the roof of, and the caps of the two men who were standing in the front of the of the porch of the door. The porch light went on and at, and at the same time the door opened. Mrs. Ryder? No, I'm the housekeeper. What is it? What's happened? This is the home of Mr. Ian Ryder? Yes. I wonder if we could come in. And Alex already knew. He knew from the way the police stood there, awkward and unhappy. But he also knew from the tone of their voices, funeral voices, that was how he would describe them, describe them later. The sort of voices people use when they come to tell you that someone close to you has died. He went to his door and opened it. He could hear the two policemen talking down in the hall, but only saw the words reached him. A car accident called the ambulance. Intensive care. Nothing that anyone could do. So sorry. It was only, a couple, it was only hours late and sitting in the kitchen. Watching as the grey light of morning bled slowly through the West London streets, that Alex could make, could try to make sense of what happened. His uncle, Ian Ryder, was dead. Driving home, his car had been hit by a truck at Old, at Old Street Roundabout, and he had been killed almost instantly. He hadn't been wearing a seatbelt, the police said. Otherwise, he might ha he might have had a chance. Alex thought of the man who had been his only relation for as long as he could remember. He had he had. Never known his own parents. They had both died in, in another car accident. This one, a plane crash, a few weeks after he had been born. He had been brought up by his father's brother, never uncle. Ian Ryder had hated that word, and spent 14 years in the same Terence house in Chelsea, London, between the King's Road and the river. The two of them had always been close. I like to remember the vacations they'd taken together, the many sports they played, the movies they'd seen. They had just... They hadn't just been relations, they'd been, they'd been friends. It was almost impossible to imagine he would never never again see the man, hear his laughter, or twist his arm to get help with his science homework. Alex sighed, fighting against the sense of grief. That was totally overwhelming. But what, happened, had, but what saddened him the most was the realisation, too late now, that despite everything he had, 
He had hardly known his uncle at all. He was a he was a banker. People said Alan looked a little like him. Ian Ryder was always travelling. A quiet private man who liked a good like good wine, classical music and books, who didn't seem to have any girlfriends. In fact, he didn't seem to have many friends at all. He had kept himself fit and never smoked, and hardly dressed and had dressed expensively. But that wasn't enough. It wasn't a picture of a life. It was only a thumbnail sketch. Are you all right, Alex? A, a young woman had come into the room. She was late in a she was in her late twenties, with a sprawl of red hair and around, and around boyish face. Jack Starbright was American. She had come to London as a student seven years ago, rented a room in a house in return for light homework and babysitting duties, and had stayed on to become housekeeper and one of Alex's closest companions. Sometimes he wondered what Jackie was short. Jack was short for Jackie. Jacqueline? Neither of them suited her. And although he had once asked, she had never said. Alice nodded. What do you think will happen? He asked. What do you mean? To the house? To me? To you? I don't know, she shrugged. I guess Ian would have had a, made a will. He'll have left instructions. Maybe we should look in, look in his office. Yeah, but not today, Alex. Let's take it one step at a time. Ian's office was a room running the full length of the house, high up on the roof, on the top. It was the only room that was always locked. Alex had only been in there three or four times, and never on his own. When he was younger, he had been fas fan fantasized that there might be something strange up there, a time machine or a UFO. But it was merely an office with a desk, a couple of filing cabinets, shelves full of papers and books, black bank stuff. That's what Ian said. Even so, Alex wanted to go up there now. The police said he wasn't wearing a seatbelt. Alex turned to look at Jan. She nodded. Yeah, that's what they said. Doesn't that seem strange to you? You know how careful he was. He always wore a seatbelt. He wouldn't even drive me around the corner without making me put it mine on. Jack thought for a moment, then shrugged. Yeah, it is strange, she said. But that must have been the way it was. Why would the police have lied? The day that dragged on. Alex hadn't gone to school even though secretly he wanted to. He would have preferred to escape back into a no into normal life. The clang of the bell, the crowds of familiar faces, instead of sitting here, trapped inside the house. But he had to be there for the visitors who came throughout the morning and the rest of the afternoon. There were five of them. A lawyer who knew nothing about nothing about any will, but seemed to have been charged for organising the funeral. A funeral director who had recommended been recommended by the lawyer. A vicar, tall, elderly, who seemed disappointed that Alex refused to cry. A neighbour from across the road. How did she, she even know that anyone died? And finally, a man from the bank. All of us at the Royal and, Gen Royal and General are deeply shocked, he said. He looked to about 30, wearing a polyester suit with, Mar with a Marks and Spencer's tie. He had a sort of face you forgot even when, while you're looking at it, and had introduced himself as Crawley from personal personal. But if there's anything we can do, what will happen, Alex? That's for the second time time that day. You don't have to worry, Crawley said. The bank will take care of everything. That's my job. You ha you leave everything to me. The day passed. Alex killed a couple of hours knocking a few balls around on his uncle's snooker table and then felt vaguely guilty when Jack caught him at it. But what else was he to do? Later on, she took him to a Burger King. He was glad to get out of the house, but the two of them barely smoked. Smoke, really? The two of them barely spoke. Alex assumed Jack would have to go back to America. She certainly couldn't stay in London forever. So who would look after him? I thought Ian was still young, too young to look after himself. His own, foot, his own future looked so uncertain that he preferred not to talk about it. He preferred not to talk at all. And then the day of the funeral arrived, and Alex found himself dressed in a dark jacket and cords, preparing to leave in a black car that had come from nowhere, surrounded by people he... I never met. Ian Ryder was buried in Brompton Cemetery on Fulham Road, just in the shadow of the Chelsea soccer field. And Alex knew where he would have preferred to be on that warm Wednesday afternoon. About 30 people had turned up, but he hardly recognised any of them. A grave had been dug close to the lane that ran the length of the cemetery. And as the service began, a black Royals Royce, Rolls Royce drew up. The back door opened and man got out. Alex watched 
him as he walked forward and stopped. Alex shivered. There was something about the new arrival that made his skin, skin crawl. And yet the man was ordinary to look at. Grey suit, grey hair, grey lips, and grey eyes. His face was expressionless. The eyes behind the square, gun, gun metal spectacles, completely empty. Perhaps that was what had disturbed Alex. Whoever this man was, he seemed to have, have less life than anyone in the cemetery above or below ground. Someone tapped on Alex, tapped Alex on the so shoulder, and he turned them around to see Mr. Crawley leaning over him. That's Mr. Blunt, the personal manager, whispered. He's the chairman of the bank. Alex, Alex's eyes travelled past Blunt over to the Rose Race. Two more of the men had come, over, come with him, one of them driving. They were wearing identical suits, and although it wasn't a particularly bright day, sun sunglasses, both of them were watching the funeral with the same grim faces. Alex watched that, watched from them to Blunt and then to the other people who had come to the cemetery. Had they really known Ian Ryder? Why had he never met any of them before? And why did he find it so difficult to believe that they were, really worked for, the bla for a bank? He is a good man, a patriotic man. He will be missed. The vicar finished his graveyard address. His choice of words struck Alex as odd. Patriotic? That meant he loved this country. But as far as Alex knew, he had barely spent any time in it. Certainly he had never been one for waving the Union Jack. He looked around, hoping to find Jack, but instead saw that Blunt was making his way toward him, stepping, closer around the grave. St stepping carefully around the, gra the grave. It must be Alex. The chairman was only a little taller than him. Up close, his skin was strangely unreal. It could have been made out of plastic. My name is Alan Bunn, he said. Your uncle spoke about you. That's funny, Alex said. He never mentioned you. The grey lips twitched brief briefly. We'll miss him. He was a good man. What was he good at? Alex asked. He never talked about his work. Suddenly Crawley was there. Your uncle was overseas finance manager, Alex. He was responsible for our foreign branches. You must have known that. I know he travelled a lot, and I know he was very careful about things like seat belts. Well, sadly, he wasn't careful enough. Blunt eyes magnified by the thick lenses of his spectacles, lazing into his own. For a moment, Alex felt himself pinned down like an insect under a microscope. I hope we'll meet again, Blunt went on. He tapped the side of his face with a single grey finger. Yes. Then he turned and went back to his car. That was what was when it happened. As Blunt was getting into the Rolls Royce, the, le the driver leaned down to open the back door and his jacket fell open, revealing a s stark white shirt underneath. There was a black shape lying against it, and that was what caught Alex's eye. The man was wearing a leather holster with an automatic pistol strapped inside. Realising what had happened, the driver pulled, quickly pulled, straightened up and pulled the jacket across. Blunt had seen it too. Kids playing outside. Great weather for it. <laughs> he turned back and looked again at Alex. Something was very close to a, an emotion slipped over his face. Then he got into the car. The door closed. And he was gone. A gun at a funeral? Alex thought. Why? Why should man bank managers carry guns? Let's get out of here. Suddenly Jack was at his side. Cemeteries give you the creeps. Yes, and quite a few creeps had turned up. Alex muttered. They slipped away uh, um, quietly and went home. The car that had taken them to his funeral was still waiting, but they preferred the open air. The walk took them about fifty minutes, and as they know, as and as they turned the corner on the street, Alex noticed a moving van parked in front of the house. The words "Striker and Son" painted on its side. What's that doing? He began. At the, at the same moment, the van shot off, the wheels skidding over the surface of the road. Alex said nothing as Jack unlocked the door and let them in. But while she went into the kitchen to make some some tea, he quickly looked around the house. All that had been on. Had been on the whole table now lay on the carpet. A door that had been half open was now closed. Tiny details, but Alex, his eyes never. Alex's eyes missed nothing. Somebody had been in the house. He was almost sure of it, but he wasn't sure, certain until he got to the top floor. The door to the office, which had always been locked, was now unlocked. Alex's, Alex opened it and went in. The room was empty. Ian Ryder had gone, and so had everything else: the desk drawers, the closets, the shelves, everything. Anything connected to the dead, man, dead man's work had been taken. Whatever the truth was about his uncle's past, someone had just wiped it out.
and that leaves it for the next chapter. It's been a 15 minute video. I hope you guys have enjoyed. That was chapter one of Alex Riders, of the first in the Alex Riders series, Stormbreaker. Like, comment, and subscribe for more videos. Peace out.